All right, guys, 6.5 gets us into, as you can see here, solving radical equations. If you haven't picked up on this yet, we basically do the same two things in every chapter in Algebra 2. We learn how to solve certain types of equations, and we learn how to graph certain types of functions. So really everything we've done up until this point in Chapter 6 has been leading us towards this. How do we solve equations that have radicals in them? Like problem number one right here, where the cube root of x plus 2 is equal to 0. Well, all the mathematical instincts that hopefully you guys have been developing over the last four or five years, maybe, since you started really doing pre-algebra, probably in seventh grade, are really should really kick in right here. We're basically just looking for inverse operations to undo all of the things that are being done to our variable. So as you look at this right here, we've got a cube root of x plus 2 equals 0. You're probably going to tell me that the first thing we should get rid of is that plus 2 right there, because addition is pretty low on the priority list for order of operations, which means it's the first thing that we undo. And you'd be right about that. So we're going to subtract a 2 from the left and a 2 from the right. And those terms are going to cancel now. And we're going to be left with the cube root of x is equal to negative 2. Now, there's really only one thing left to deal with here, guys, and that would be the cube root. So the question now becomes, how does one undo a cube root? What is the inverse operation that'll make that go away? Well, we've seen examples this year where we've had something like the square root of x is equal to, I'm just going to make up a number here, 7. And if I had asked you, how do we undo a square root, just about everybody would tell me you square it. You square the left and you square the right, and then the square and the square root cancel, and you would just get x equals 49 in that case. So let's think about this, guys. If to undo a square root, you square. If we now want to undo a cube root, we are going to cube both sides right here, okay? That becomes x to the third power, and if we're going to do that to the left, we're going to do that to the right as well. Now, some people are perfectly fine just accepting what I said. To undo a cube root, you cube. The real reason for that, I'm going to do this in green, everybody, and you do not need to write this down, but here's what this really means. A cube root could be rewritten as x to a fractional exponent now of one-third. And then when we go and cube that, power of a power, this is when you multiply your exponents together, and three times one-third is 1. But of course, you never need to write an exponent of 1. So what you really have there is a nice single solitary x all by its lonesome, which is always what we're trying to get when we're solving an equation. So that's the real reason why a cube will undo a cube root. But like I said, a lot of people don't think that hard, and they say, okay, that makes sense, I'll write that down, and here we go. So the cube and the cube root cancel, and we're left with just x equals, and here we go, guys, negative 2 to the third power. Count on your fingers with me. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, times another negative 2 is negative 8. Now, there's two great things about solving equations that high school students like better than simplifying expressions. Number one, you know when you're done. When you have variable equals constant, that's when you're done. And then we like to go ahead and box that up. But the other great thing about it that people don't always take advantage of, you should be able to test your solution here by plugging it back into the original equation right here and making sure you get a true statement. So let me just try to cram this right above it here, guys. The cube root of negative 8 plus 2 should equal 0. Well, let's think about that. The cube root of negative 8, what number times itself times itself again is negative 8? That's negative 2. And negative 2 plus 2, yep, sure enough, that equals 0. So I feel real good about that answer. Probably shouldn't have boxed it up until after I checked it, but there we go. x is equal to negative 8. So what we're really trying to do here, guys, is isolate the radical. We were trying to get this cube root all by itself, so the first thing we had to do was move that 2 off to the right. Okay, different looking problem right here, but the concept is generally the same. 3x to the 2 fifths power plus 8 is going to equal 20. So in terms of, let's go back to 7th grade right here, 
PEMDAS, everybody, and remember that M and D should really be written on the same level, and so should A and S. So, this is the order in which we do things, but when we're trying to solve an equation, we actually read this table bottom up. Let's get rid of any addition or subtraction that we see first, so we're going to get rid of that plus 8 by subtracting 8 from both sides. And what's that going to do for us? 3x to the 2 fifths power is going to equal 12. That takes care of all the addition and the subtraction. Now, is there any multiplication or division to deal with? Yeah, the x here is being taken to the 2 fifths power, but then multiplied by 3. So we're going to get rid of that multiplication by 3 by dividing both sides by 3. Those 3's cancel, and we're now going to get x to the 2 fifths power is equal to, well this is convenient, 12 divides evenly by 3, and we end up with 4. So that takes care of the only multiplication or division that we saw. Now, do we have any exponents? Yeah, clearly we do, x to the 2 fifths. So how in the world do we get rid of a 2 fifths power? Well, this is a little trickier than what we did just a second ago. We're going to need another exponent right here, guys, on the end of that, to get that 2 fifths power to go away, kind of. What we're going to do is take the reciprocal of the exponent that's there. The reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 halves. So we're going to take the left side to the 5 halves power. Now let me explain quickly. The reason we're going to do that is because now we have an expression that is a power of a power. This is when you multiply these two exponents together. Well, 2 fifths and 5 halves are reciprocals of one another, which means we're going to end up with just x to the first power there. Any number times its reciprocal is 1. But we don't need to write a first power right there. It's implied. We leave it there, and we get x all by itself. Now, I've gotten ahead of myself a little bit. You can take the left side to the 5 halves power if you want, but you have to do the exact same thing to the right side as well. So, power of a power, a number times its reciprocal is 1, and you don't need to bother writing the 1 there. x is equal to, and let me just jump right over here, guys, and take a moment right here. 4 to the 5 halves power is probably not something you guys just know, so let's go back to 6, 4, and let's rewrite it with a radical. The radicand is 4. The index is your denominator, which is 2, but you never need to write a 2 there for your index. And then the numerator, 5, that's your exponent. So let's do this mentally, guys. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 to the fifth power is 32. And there's our solution there. And we can check it now by plugging it back into the original equation. And I think for this one, I'm going to do it on the calculator. So it's 3x to the 2 fifths power. So here we go. Uh, 3, our x we just came up with was 32. And we're taking that to the, here we go, the 2 fifths power power. Right arrow, right arrow to get all of that. So 3 times 32 to the 2 fifths power plus 8. And then when I hit enter, it should equal 20. Let's try that. So plus 8. And there it is, guys, the 20 that we were looking for. So we just confirmed that that answer is correct. And I feel pretty good about that one. It's got a box and a circle, so you know it must be good. All right. So those two problems probably give you a pretty decent sense uh, for what it is that we're doing here in this section. All right, how about one like this? 6 multiplied by the square root of 4x minus 7 minus 4 is equal to 14. Okay, first thing we're going to get rid of, according to PEMDAS, addition or subtraction, I got a minus 4 at the end. So we're going to add 4 on the left and add 4 on the right. Those terms cancel out, and we get 6 times the square root of 4x minus 7 is equal to 14 plus 4 is 18. Now right here, most people get that first step right, but right here is the spot that people tend to make a lot of mistakes. For some reason, not entirely sure why, Algebra 2 students right here want to deal with the radical. But I want to remind everybody again, PEMDAS. There we go. So we dealt with addition and subtraction, but the next thing we have to deal with is multiplication or division. We've got to, and here's the phrase I keep coming back to, guys, for this section here, isolate the radical. 
get the root all by itself, then worry about getting rid of it. We haven't isolated the radical yet because this 6 is still here outside of it being multiplied by it. So how do we undo multiplication by 6? We divide both sides by 6. It's not that people don't understand what we're doing, it's that they just forget that they've got to get rid of that coefficient here first. So the 6s are gone, leaving us with the square root of 4x minus 7 equals, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. And now, everybody, we have isolated the radical. So how do I get rid of a square root? We are going to square the left side of this equation. And of course, if you're going to square the left, we have to do the exact same thing to the right. Now, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So we end up with a 4x minus 7 is equal to, and 3 squared is 9. We're going to add that 7 to both sides and get a 4x is equal to a 16, and then divide both sides by 4 and get x equals 4. Looks like a nice answer, but let's plug it in and try it right here. You know what, guys? I feel like we can probably do this one just talking our way through it. If x is 4, it goes right here, and here we go. 4 times 4? That's 16. 16 minus 7 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. 6 multiplied by that 3 is going to get you an 18 here. Minus 4 should equal 14, does it? 18 minus 4 sure does. We end up with 14 there. So now I will box that answer up, and I have felt good about all three of these answers that we've come up with, because in each case, I've plugged that x value back into the original equation, and I've gotten a true statement. Hmm, I wonder why I would say that before moving on to the next problem. Let's take a look at number 4, which at first glance really isn't much different or more complicated than what we just did in uh, problem number three. Although I'll warn you guys, there's one really simple algebra one mistake that your freshman brother or sister or best friend or whatever might do, and that's to just read this thing from left to right and say, ooh, 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 11 plus 2 makes a 13 times the square root of 2x minus 3. No, no, no. Guys, order of operations says that this 2 right here has to be multiplied by everything that comes after it first and then added to the 11. I just added unlike terms. That would be like saying that 5 plus 4x is equal to 9x. You can't just put the 5 and the 4 together and then just stick the x on at the end. These are not like terms. They can't be combined, everybody. So that's an Algebra 1 mistake I don't want to see anybody in Algebra 2 making. So according to PEMDAS, the first thing we get rid of is addition or subtraction. And don't be fooled here, guys. Even though this 11 comes at the beginning of this expression, that's no different than doing a plus 11 here instead. It really doesn't matter. That's what we have to get rid of first. So we're going to subtract an 11 from both sides of the equation. Those cancel, and we'll now get a positive 2 times the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 1 minus 11 is negative 10. Now again, we haven't isolated the radical yet. We've got to get rid of that 2 that's being multiplied out in front, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Those cancel, and we'll now get the square root of 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Now, everybody, now we have isolated the radical. Yeah, there's stuff going on underneath it, but I'm not worried about that. There's nothing going on outside of it. How do we undo a square root? Just like the last problem. We square the left and we square the right. And you guys will notice I did something right there, and it's really important. You've got to put parentheses around a negative number before you square it. Now, the left side here is easy. That's just 2x minus 3, but let me prove my point to you guys here. We're squaring the right side, which was negative 5. So ask yourself, what is negative 5 multiplied by itself? This is one of those weird questions where more of you will get the right answer not using your calculator rather than using your calculator. Negative 5 times itself should be positive 25. Is that what my calculator tells me? Well, it depends. A lot of Algebra 2 students are going to make this simple mistake right here. Negative 5 
squared, and their calculator is going to tell them the answer is negative 25, and that's what they're going to write down. Now, did my calculator just make a mistake? Absolutely not. I made a mistake, and a lot of Algebra 2 students make mistakes because I typed it into my calculator incorrectly. Every time you're going to take a negative number to an even power, you've got to put that base in parentheses. So negative 5 in parentheses, and then close the parentheses, and then square it, that will give you the proper answer you're looking for of 25. Back to this one right here. There we go, that one right there. Your calculator does not interpret that as negative 5 squared. Your calculator reads that as the opposite of 5 squared. So by order of operations, what the calculator's been programmed to do is take the base, positive 5, and square it to get positive 25, then turn around and take the opposite of that result, and that's how your calculator gets, sorry, negative 25 for that answer right there. So no, the calculator's not wrong. I just didn't ask the calculator to do what I intended to. From here, guys, this is an Algebra 1 problem. We're going to add 3 on both sides, and we're going to get 2x is equal to 28, and then we're going to divide both sides by 2 and get x equals 14. And boy, in the last three problems, every time I've gotten a solution for x, I've plugged it back into the original equation and gotten a true statement. So let's try that same thing right now. And just because I want you guys to believe me here, I'm going to do this expression right here in the calculator and hope that I end up with a 1. If I do, I'll know I got this right. So 11 plus 2 times the square root of, all right guys, 11 plus 2 times, it was a square root of, and then what we had there was a 2x minus 3. So 2 times 14 minus 3. So all this is the radicand. 2 times 14 minus 3, right? All that was underneath. Okay, and if we've done this right, guys, I'm going to hit enter, and we should end up with 1 for our answer. Survey says not 1. We ended up with 21 here instead of 1. So two things are possible. Either A, I typed it into my calculator incorrectly. I'll save you the drama right here. I didn't. I typed that in exactly right. The other possibility is that this value that we came up with, 14, is not actually a solution to this equation. Now let's talk about why that is. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to switch to green here real quick. So what happens when we put in 14? 2 times 14 is going to be 28. 28 minus 3 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. We're going to multiply that 5 times 2 and get 11 plus 2 times 5 is 10. And I was hoping to get 1. I didn't. That explains the 21 that my calculator just told me the answer was. The calculator got that by taking 11 plus 10. Now, what this tells me without question is that 14 is not a solution to this equation. Now, it's possible I made a mistake, but I didn't. Something else is at work here, too. Now, let's talk about why that is here, guys. I want you to notice the 21 that we got isn't totally random right here. It's pretty clear, I think, to all of us that 11 plus 10 does not equal 1. But ask yourself, what is the relationship between the numbers 11, 10, and 1? Hopefully you see it. The problem is right here. If that were 11 minus 10 then we would have ended up with a true statement. Now here's the kicker, guys. Let's go back to where we were a second ago. When we were checking x equals 14, I put it in right here. 2 times 14 is 28. 28 minus 3 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. But there is another number besides 5, guys, that you can square, multiply by itself, and get it to equal 25. That number is negative 5. So if I had thought, if I had taken the negative square root of 25, this right here that I'm underlining would have been negative 5 times 2 would have been negative 10. So it becomes now 11 plus negative 10, and does that equal 1? 
Yes, it does. So that at least explains where the 14 comes from and that it's not just random. It, it does make some sense. But the way this problem was written with this expression right here, they were not asking us for the negative square root of 25. To do that, they would have had to put a little minus right there and then put that in parentheses. They were asking us for the positive square root of 25. So that is why the 14 has to be thrown out. It is what we call an extraneous solution. You guys might, I don't think I spelled that right. Extraneous, oh, there we go. Extraneous solution. And then let's go back to something we talked about in chapter eight everybody. If you only get one answer and it doesn't work out, then your real answer right here is no solution to this equation right here. There is no real number of x that you could put in here into this equation and get the left side to equal 1. So the no solution thing pops its head up again, just like it did here and there once in a while back in chapter 8. All right, guys, that's a tricky one. I've only got one problem left to do with you guys, and then I think you know what you need to know here uh, for section uh, eight point, or excuse me, 6.5. So let's take a look at what's going on right here. Now, I hope this is obvious. This problem is harder than the last four because we have two radicals. So when I told you before, isolate the radicals, now I'm going to tell you a little bit something that's different right here. Let's separate the radicals. Let's get one of them on the left and let's get one of them on the right. So I'm going to take this negative one here and add 2 root x on the left and we'll add 2 root x on the right. Those two cancel and we will now get the square root of 3x plus 2 is equal to, well 0 plus anything is the anything, 2 root x. And there we go. Now, all section long, I've been telling you guys, isolate the radical. So some students say, and I love them for saying this, ooh, I got to get rid of that too. Great idea. How would you do that? You would divide by 2. But if I divide the right by 2, I have to divide the left by 2 as well. Now, don't write this down. I solved one problem. I now have the right side with an isolated radical. The problem is I've just created another problem here on the left. This is now the square root of 3x plus 2 all over 2. And I haven't isolated that radical now. I've put a 2 in the denominator. So the, the, the gist of this problem here, guys, is yeah, it's always a great idea to isolate radicals if you can, but at some point, like where we are right now, you have to deal with that 2 there. You can't put it anywhere that it just won't exist. So now that we have separated the radicals, what do we do to get rid of a square root? We square the left side and the right side. But it's really important here, guys, that we use parentheses, and I'll show you why in a second. We square the left, and then we take the entire right side, and we square that as well. Now, the left side here is pretty easy. The square and the square root cancel out, and we just get 3x plus 2. Now, on the right side, now that I've written parentheses, I'm hoping you guys can see there are one two factors in this monomial base being taken to the second power, we're going to backwards distribute the square in there. This is what most people forget. The 2 gets squared, and we start off with a 4 right here. And then the square root of x squared is just going to be x. But I'll tell you guys right now, an awful lot of people uh, don't write this down, are going to forget to put those parentheses right there, and that means they're going to forget to distribute the exponent here, and what they're probably going to write is 2x over there on the right-hand side. Let me tell you guys, if I was writing a multiple-choice question, this is what we were dealing with, one of my three wrong answers, I would have made this mistake right here, and I think you'd come up then with x equals negative 2, which is not correct. Okay, so the important thing was, what I want you guys to take from that, you've got to put parentheses around the entire left side and the entire right side before taking them to a power, and then remember to distribute that exponent in, and that's why we ended up with 4x. So what are we going to do here? We're going to subtract a 3x from both sides of the equation. Those cancel. Oh, and we're actually done here. 2 equals 4x minus 3x 
is just plain x. So let's see if that one works out, because I kind of learned a lesson from the last problem. Just because you get a solution doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. So let's plug a 2 in for x. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So we end up with the square root of 8 minus 2 times the square root of 2 should equal 0. Is that right? Well, it doesn't look like it at first, but this square root here, I believe, can be simplified. The 8 can be broken up into 4 times 2. Circle your perfect square, bring out its square root. The square root of 4 is 2, and then this 2 gets stuck under the radical. 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 equals 0? Yeah, any number, even if it's irrational, minus itself will always equal zero. So that answer there is correct. We were able to plug it back into the equation originally and verify that we ended up with a true statement. All right, guys, that is all the stuff that I have for you here from section 6.5. So hopefully we've looked at that one and thought that wasn't too bad. So give that homework a shot and let us know when you guys have some questions. But good luck, everybody.